Most of the damage in Super Mario RPG is decided by action commands, or how well you can time your button presses, so of course I'm gonna try to beat the game without using them at all. Oh boy. I quickly realized that doing less damage was the least of my worries. Action commands allow you to block damage, so I'll be taking hits in almost every single encounter. Because of this, I decided it was in my best interest to fight every enemy I saw and only level up physical. This is your attack and defense stat, and I figured if I'm not taking as much damage per hit, I might be able to tank more hits from bosses without having to use more expensive healing items later on. Kingdom Way contains the first real boss fight, which is against two Hammer Bros. I spammed my jump attack until I was out of FP, then spammed regular attacks. I I'd been grinding in the previous rooms to reach level 3, which meant their attacks were only doing 1 damage. After unlocking Malo and heading to Bandit Way, I was able to speed up grinding by spamming Thunderbolt, but my first KO happened while fighting some Frogogs, really highlighting how I needed to get my defense higher as soon as possible. This area is also home to the first Croco fight. He's weak to fire, so I spammed some extremely pathetic fireball attacks, until I realized I forgot to buy FP heals from the Mushroom Kingdom shop. Thankfully, I was still able to get through by spamming regular attacks and healing every so often. While fighting Shymores in the Mushroom Kingdom, I accidentally let Muscle Memory kick in and guarded against one of their attacks, hint why my gauge is now at 8%. I felt the best punishment for this was to just not attack for a couple of turns, so I'd take the damage I would have taken had I not blocked. I don't think it's worth resetting unless I block against a boss or something, but I wanted to address the elephant in the room. Speaking of bosses, the first major boss was Clay Morton, who's weak to lightning. This was perfect since he summons huge groups of Shymores, so I just spammed Thunderbolt while they were out and held back when they weren't. I decided not to grind before the fight, and it really showed with how much damage Clay Morton was dealing, especially to Mario near the end. Hey, so, uh, remember when I used the fireball earlier? I thought you had to press A or you'd be stuck there forever, but in actuality you can just wait it out and it'll eventually do an even weaker attack. And that's probably why the gauge was above 0% earlier, because it probably counted that as a successful action command. The woes of trying to do a challenge run of a new game, I guess. Also, Shadow does so much damage. I'm editing this video while playing, which I don't normally do, and maybe I should have increased my magic defense at least once, you know? Anyway, after spamming Thunderbolt on Bellum, I immediately bought two Fearless Pins from Rose Town to make up for my terrible magic defense stat, and next up was Forest Maze. The Amanita fights take actual centuries to finish. If you don't end them quick enough, they'll turn you into mushrooms and you're just kind of stuck like that for some reason. It's nice that they're weak to fire, but sometimes that isn't enough, since I don't exactly do much damage. I might need all the XP I can get, but I still don't want to actually fight the Wigglers because I like them. They were very kind and they gave me a bunch of frog coins in return. Boyo is an interesting boss because they can lock you out of certain abilities. Since you can get locked out of regular attacks, it's best to just save your specials for when you're forced to use them. You also unlock Gino here, and I noticed that he's a lot weaker than Mario and Milo. Oh, he's dead. His Geno Beam attack is actually pretty bad with that action command, so I usually just delegated him to healing and attacked with Mario and Malo. And I actually- hold on, he's dead again? I was pretty terrified when he locked the item button, but since I'd been leveling up my attack almost non-stop, I was able to take him out before that became an issue. The end of this fight also acts as a tutorial for the triple moves. It automatically fills the gauge for us, which is great because I don't have to be reminded of my screw up from earlier anymore. Triple moves are just cutscenes with no action command, so in theory I can use them, but I actually need to increase the gauge again, so that's probably not happening. Nothing much really happened in Moleville outside of Geno dying repeatedly. So I bought him some new gear, unlocked Bowser, bought him some new gear, and then started working on Star 4. The Sniffits and Booster Tower were doing some really hefty damage, so I decided to only level up magic in this area instead of physical. Besides, some enemies were still only doing one damage, even though it's a new area. I managed to accidentally block again, and this time I realized that a better punishment would be to force myself to run from the fight and retry it whenever that happens. I've also never tried the secret boss fight against Booster, so I decided to give it a shot. It wasn't very difficult, I just spammed super jumps. As for Knife Guy and Great Guy, I just spammed Super Fireball and Shocker on them respectively, and I used Geno with my FP healer. At Star Hill, apparently Thropa has an attack where they just kind of sit there and do nothing. Didn't know that. And at C, Geno died again. Spiritovich was doing some insane damage with Water Blast, but now I have Peach on the team to do super powerful group heals with very little FP, so I kept her out while Milo spammed Shocker and Thunderbolt. The Bellum rematch was a pain because he can put everyone to sleep at once. I decided to use Bowser's Poison Gas to keep chipping away at his health while I kept healing. At Bean Valley, the Please No absolutely obliterated me. I used every single pick-me-up slot in my inventory and left immediately afterwards to restock items. I also decided to buy an EXP booster for Peach. My thinking was to make my main healer overleveled and be able to tank anything. Smilax gave me flashbacks to the Mushroom Hell from earlier. The spamming Geno boosted snowy attacks with Malo did the trick. 
Also, during the beanstalk climb, why is this jump like this? Am I missing something? Surely this can't be the intended way to do this, but I can't think of another method. Why? This is such a the big guys getting ready to launch moment. The mandatory fight against Dodo is a 1v1, and to my knowledge, you don't get to pick the one. I ended up with Peach, which was pretty perfect because I could just heal constantly. When Dodo and Valentina joined back together, I found their attack a little overwhelming, so I focused on Dodo first. In Barrel Volcano, I was really beginning to feel the burnout of grinding for hours without actually engaging with the game. Super early on, there were already encounters with absurd amounts of enemies, so I ended up grinding frog coins and forest maze and buying a flower ring to spam Snowy through the whole area. The Saw Dragon fight was super easy, because I realised you could just mute him with Peach and he barely ever attacks you, but the Zombone fight was a bit harder. Or maybe it would have been the same if I actually thought to use Mute, but I didn't, and therefore it was harder. <laughs> Despite being weak to Thunder, I wasn't having great results, so I switched out Mallow for Geno so I could use his Geno boost. While I found that pure water items did decent damage, I didn't want to take any risks, so I kept my usual formula of healing with Peach and spamming regular attacks with the other two. The battle against the Actum Rangers was the first one I really have to think about. There's five of them all attacking at once, so pretty much every turn I find myself almost dead. I formed my strategy around the stats for the SNES version of the game, since that's all we really have at the time of recording. First I went for Yellow, because he has the highest attack stat. He's weak to jump, so I gave Geno Boost to Mario and spammed jumps. I was hoping to give Geno Boost to everyone, but he went down pretty much immediately. I also saw Pink healing Red, despite me not touching him at all, so I figured I probably didn't have to worry about her for a little while. Yellow ended up going down in two hits. Next I picked Green, because he had the highest magic attack stat, and my magic defense had been infamously bad throughout this challenge. He's also weak to ice, and I already had Malo out. Despite this strategy, Malo went down, and Mario and Peach got shroomed, leaving only Bowser in the running. Somehow, I was able to heal everyone back again though. While doing this, Pink also did a massive heal on Green, which made me realize that maybe she was a threat after all, and needed to be gone at the nearest convenience. Black was next since he's weak to thunder, and I happen to have Mallow out. Shocker is only 4 RFP thanks to the grinding from earlier, which makes it much safer to spam without running out. When only Red remained, I used this as an opportunity to revive Geno and get my FP back. Although Red was weak to ice, I decided to save my FP for the final fade against the Blade. Once the Blade was active, it immediately one-shot Bowser and almost took out the rest. While I wanted to revive him at a safety net, I swapped in Malo right away since it's weak to thunder. Every other turn, the Blade shoots the same devastating attack which the party can barely survive. But thankfully, Peach can use Group Hug to heal everyone to full every single time, which ironically makes this the least threatening part of the whole fight. All that for 17 experience. I feel scammed. The Axum Rangers set the new standard for boss fights in this challenge, each being more terrifying than the last. Next in line is Boomer, who defeats you in one hit if you don't block his attack correctly. And I can't block attacks at all, so I just kept dying and dying and- <laughs> I just had to hope that he didn't go for Peach, because you can only hold 6 pick-me-ups total and Peach is the only other way to revive people. The Exor fight was a mad scramble, because it doesn't let you go back and save after Boomer's RNG fest. The left eye has the least HP and is weak to jump. Exor is immune to damage and lets you defeat one of his eyes, so I thought this would be the one to go for. So my initial strategy was to focus on that and just tank everything else. Exor isn't weak to anything and is immune to stated effects, so I found myself getting absolutely bodied by his other attacks. My second strategy was to poison the eyes and mouth and have that damage chip away over time while I kept healing. It was a little more effective, but Hector has thousands of HP and I only do about 50 damage at a time. I ended up playing the long game, healing if anyone went below half health and doing small attacks here and there. Eventually, Exor's body parts ran out of FP, which I didn't know was a thing that could even happen, and he mostly stopped attacking me. This was where I could play a little more risky, heal less often, and finally end him off. Definitely the hardest fight so far, and had me concerned for the finale. For Weapon World, I decided to give my XP booster to Malo, since I'll be needing his specials in the final fight, and I need him to be able to tank more hits. Perhaps counterintuitively, I chose not to fight the Glum Reapers in the area, because they can defeat you in one hit. I instead opted to do some extra grinding in other areas. The boss fight against Countdown and the two Ringadings was maybe the closest I've been to giving up. I started by once again making the mistake of trying to spread my damage across all the targets instead of focusing on the easier ones first. Ringadings have a bit less HP than Countdown and can use attacks such as Fear Roulette, which are 
one hit kills. Then Countdown can combo it with unblockable status attacks like Pedal Blast, and everything goes south really, really fast. Once I went full focus on the Ring of Dings, they went down pretty quickly, and Countdown itself was pretty manageable. The rest of Weapon World is pretty much just bosses. We have rematches against the Axum Rangers, with one formation of pink, red, and green, and another formation of two yellows and two blacks. It also rematches against Clay Morton, Boyer, and Spiridovich, as well as the double up boss fight at the end that was so unnotable I forgot to write it in my notes. There's also a boss gauntlet in the final area, but the only one really of note was Gunyok and Factory Chief. Gunyok has that same Breger Beam attack as the Blade, so I was always operating at low HP, but this time someone was actually attacking me while Breger Beam was charging back up. It was long and tedious, but it was more annoying than anything else. And now, the final boss was finally here, and the prep work paid off. His physical attacks were barely doing anything to me, and the magic attacks were enough to be healed away with Peach. I made sure to focus on Smelter first by spamming Shocker and Jump. Then I focused on Smithy and the Shysters together with Jump and Thunderbolt. The second phase was much more difficult, but I honestly got really lucky. Since Smithy's body can respawn, I chose to only attack the head and tank the rest of the damage. The head has multiple different forms that change randomly throughout the fight, and they're weak to different Things. Tank is weak to Thunder, meaning I can just spam Shocker. Mask is weak to Ice, meaning I can just spam Snowy. Magic isn't weak to anything, per se, but it has abnormally high magic defense and abnormally low physical defense, so you can just attack normally. There's also Smithy's regular form, which has no weaknesses, and Smithy's treasure form, which is weak to fire. My fireball attack has been pretty useless in other fights, but I didn't have to rely on it because I never got those two phases a single time. So, that was Mario RPG without action commands, except for the few times at the start where I accidentally hit A, oops. Playing a 15 hour RPG without engaging with it at all was incredibly painful, so please give this video a like so it doesn't do terrible, and subscribe for more challenge videos. Oh, Gino's dead again?